Hi, everyone. Thanks again for joining us for another episode of the Fen Talks podcast. On today's episode, we're covering the really important topic of resume writing tips and how to further stand out with the crowd. So today's expert that we're featuring from our firm is Marjorie McFarlane Lucas. She is our director of firm-wide lateral legal recruiting and gosh, probably the most perfect person to help with answering some of these questions. I know a lot of businesses and organizations are hiring right now, and Fedemore happens to be one of them. And you look at so many different resumes. So I thought you would be the perfect person to ask, you know, for those looking for their next career opportunity and their next place to call home in their professional journey. I'm curious, do you have any specific tips for those individuals? Uh, sure. I mean, if you are looking to sort of um, pivot or going to another um, role as an attorney, you first want to make sure that you're ready to make the move first. Um, uh, You have to be, um, you know, decide where you want, what what is the next career um, move that you're looking to make? What what does that role look like? Um, You know, start to to both, network internally and externally on um, where you're looking to go next um, for that next role. Make a list of the type of jobs that you're looking to, to step into and you're interested in exploring, if there's a particular uh, law firm or uh, that you're interested in going to, um, check to see who in your personal network already uh, currently works there and um, reach out to those individuals and let them know uh, that you're interested in possibly exploring an opportunity there. Um, uh, If you're looking to pivot and go in-house, the same sort of rule applies. Um, uh, Again, I can't tell you how much networking is key in in, um, getting into your next role, whatever that is. Keep learning, Um, you know, if you're looking to sort of completely come out of the area that you are um, currently working in, perhaps you may need some training in another area that you're looking to get into, be it um, uh, compliance or uh, you may want to get a compliance certificate. If it's DNI, you may want to get a DNI certificate. There There are options that you have that are available to you that you can use to um, make yourself more attractive to that next employer that you're looking to um, work for. Uh, Continue to grow, continue to learn. Um, Know yourself. (laughs) Know who you are. Understand what your motives are that you know that will help you succeed. And uh, above all, look for somewhere that you think will be a good match for you. (laughs) I think these are some really great winning strategies and something that would help a lot of individuals as they're looking for that next career opportunity. But while I have you, and I know you talk about this stuff on on a regular basis and as do I from a marketing standpoint, but I'm curious, just from your perspective, what makes Fenimore such a great place to work? Ah, (laughs) that's a great question. Um... You know, I, I don't want to sound cliche about it <laughs> in, in this matter, but, you know, it truly, for me, it's the people um, and the culture. Um, and I also feel that Fenimore, um, in addition to that, the firm is truly committed to um, creating a culture that supports um, uh, mental health and uh, overall well-being um, and helping folks grow and thrive um, and and most importantly, helping businesses thrive with uh, hiring the right talent who will be great counsel for for those individuals. Um, Those are some of the qualities that makes our firm a phenomenal place to uh, come and work for and and, and just grow with. 
No, I love hearing other people's perspective. Um, cause I think yes. everybody has unique and different experiences and you know, that's probably one of the most commonly asked questions that we get, you know, right. what makes right. more such a great place to work right now. You specifically focus a lot on lateral attorney recruiting. And so right. I'm curious, you know, from an attorney standpoint, mm-hmm. what kind of attorneys would really thrive within our work environment? So, um, I think, uh, from what I've observed and the people that I've, I've met that are, uh, um, have been here for some time and have been incredibly successful and have integrated into the firm very well. And, um, you know, I'm talking folks who've been here for, you know, 10, 20 years or, or more. I feel like those individuals have traits that are high achievers. Um, they seem to have great judgment. Um, they, they, they have a passion for the area of um, the, the, the law that they practice, right? Um, uh, and and, and uh, they're driven and they're self-motivated. Um, and they also seem to have, you know, great compassion for their clients. And, and, and I think another key element is that uh, folks have that entrepreneurial spirit, we haven't been around for over 150 years for no, no, no reason. You know, we've existed as long as we have because of that key element, that entrepreneurial spirit that helps uh, us to, to thrive and be successful um, no matter what, what comes up, right? So those are the, the type of attorneys that I feel are, um, would, would, would grow and develop and thrive in the Fenmore community and culture. I know personally, from my perspective and my interactions with a lot of our attorneys, I'm always in awe of the way that they take care of our clients. So yes. that's one thing that I've really noticed, as yes. well as how engaged they are out there in our business community. In the so community, that's, yes. another, that's another key component. Agreed. Um, so Fenimore, yes. we've been around for a long time, over a hundred years. Uh, we yes. continue to grow by number as well as by offices. We've ex- yes. expanded from a geographic standpoint, but we'd love to get your thoughts based on, you know, the expansion and our growth and what you think that looks like in our future. So, um, you know, uh, I think it's, it was exciting for me to see our firm and, and I, I, I'm just, I'm going to say, I, I want, I want to say we're the only one, but we may not be the only one that actually, uh, um, grew and, 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 and merged with another firm through, uh, during the pandemic when everybody sort of went in and closed shop and sort of did things differently. We were still in growth mode and, and grew and, um, expanded and, 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 and have, uh, was able to establish a footprint in, um, in, in one of the markets that we've always wanted to go into, which is in California. And we now have, uh, three offices in California. And so it's very exciting, a very exciting time for the firm. Um, as businesses thrive in, and um, you know, we are currently uh, looking and recruiting um, exceptional attorneys for those offices that we have in California. Um, we're looking to grow those um, in, in uh, increase those numbers, uh, as well as throughout the uh, Mountain West region where we already have um, a major presence, specifically in um, our Las Vegas office and our Denver office. So for all those folks out there who are looking to <laughs> join our, uh, we're looking for work in those um, spaces, hey, uh, reach out to me and let me know and, and let's have a chat. We are always looking for exceptional talent in, um, to, to join our, uh, our growing firm. And um, we are actively in the process of, of, of meeting folks that meet the requirements that we're looking for um, in our different practice areas. So now let's say you're an East Coast attorney. Maybe yeah. your neighbor is with Marjorie. I don't know. Let's say yes. you're you're in the East Coast and you're like, wow, I heard about this great firm out there in the Western region called Fenimore. And I'd love to be a part of it, but I don't live out there. Is there That's still an opportunity for them? 
Oh, yes, indeed. <laughs> we, 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 um, we embrace virtual uh, work. Uh, we are virtual. We have, we pivoted um, successfully. Uh, we have folks like myself who are completely virtual and um, have integrated into the, 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 the culture of Fenmore successfully and um, are able to move forward and get the work done. At the end of the day, it's getting the work done and meeting the, 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 the client and the client uh, goals and objectives as well as the firm. And if you're executing that, then you're, we're, we're all on the same, we're all on the same page. And so if you're on the West East Coast and you're 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 interested in joining our phenomenal firm, that's not a problem. Um, we are happy to have a chat with folks like yourself. If if um, we fit what you're looking for and think you would be interested in um, uh, growing with us, um, we will work out uh, um some sort of arrangement that makes a, makes sense for both parties, yourself as well as um, our firm, and um, move forward. We have done that successfully with others, and will continue to do so in the future. Because I think uh, that space of remote work is truly going to be part, an integral part of what the new workspace looks like going forward. So why not tap into that? Um, niche now and be a part of it rather than catch up when everyone else has been doing it for a while. Why not be the forefronter and the, the uh, and and set the the, the pace and uh, and make that um, and be successful at it. And we are doing that, I think, successfully so far. You know, I was so excited to have this conversation with you specifically because you are relatively new to Fenimore, yes. where that's yeah. kind of rare actually at our firm because some people have been with us for 20, 30 years. So right. Right. having the fresh perspective and insight on what it's like to integrate and get to know people from right. a virtual world and being onboarded, um, I think that's really neat. And, right. you know, something else <laughs> that's really interesting is, you know, you came from a top 20 of the global 200 law firms. Yeah. And you chose Fenimore of all right. places. So, <laughs> which, hey, we love that, you know, we're able to attract awesome talent such as you. Right. So curious, you know, just from your personal experience, what was it about Fenimore that made you make the jump to our firm? So, uh, you know, I, I look back on a couple of things that made, you know, during the, the 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 process of when I was interviewing at different places, and uh, different firms like where I'm coming from, and also having conversations with Enmore, um, for me, what made the decision easy to say yes was uh, the people I met during the interview process. Right, so I interviewed during the pandemic. And I interviewed with a lot of firms during the pandemic, but I felt like um, the treatment I received, it was, so, it was at a level that just made sense to me. Um, it was meeting everyone on the management team. It was meeting the person who was going to be my future boss. Um, it was meeting my, um, uh, the, 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 the folks in the group I was going to be working with. Um, the treatment I received pre, during, and post the interview process was truly stellar. It was phenomenal. It was the little things such as a partner sending me a personal note after we met and following up to see if I had further questions. It was those little attention to details just to check in after I received my offer, you know, just to check in and make, you know, it was just, it was, there were little things that I took notice of that made sense to me. And also in addition to that, I um, I did my research on where I'm going. You're supposed to, right? <laughs> you don't wanna jump from firm to firm like, oh, then you get there like, oh Lord, what have I done? You wanna do your research. You wanna make sure that where you are going next 
makes sense for you. So I did my research on the firm overall, um, the impression that I, I got from all the things that I've read um, is that it's there's stability at the firm. Um, there's, there was, a, I, I saw, you know, and plus conversations I had with individuals, um, it showed economic stability during um, interesting times and how the firm um, handled those situations and how they came out of those situations. That was key for me versus what I saw with other places that were also interested in me and, and made me offers that I didn't accept. Right? <laughs> and so, um, and, I, and in addition to that, I also, I believe we're, you know, and as I said, I think I said it earlier, we're one of the firms truly that were, the only firm to merge with another firm during the pandemic. And that was also important for me to, to, to see that we are in growth mode, right? And that was key for me. And, 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 and Lindsay, sometimes you just have to listen to your gut, right? If your gut tells you, hey, this feels right. This is okay. Give them a shot. You know, I had a good feeling about the opportunity. And 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 those are the, the the things that when I sat down and I looked at what I what was in front of me, they wrote, you know, our, our firm rose to the top. And I thought, let me go with this one. Right. And that's what I did. And so I ended up here. <laughs> well, we are so thankful and so glad you went with your gut and chose us because it's been a yeah. pleasure working with you. And you certainly bring a whole lot of energy and you're a shining light within the firm. So we're oh, super thank thankful to have you on our team. It's 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 a, it's great to be here. And I and, and the feeling is mutual. Likewise. Yes. So, all right, enough about Fenimore and how awesome <laughs> Marjorie is. What we're here to talk about is resume writing, right? Yes. So for those individuals in the legal profession, they are, maybe they haven't dusted off the resume in a while. They are just putting a pen to paper or reviewing and redlining one of their resumes. Right. Do you have any specific tips for them that you would offer when it comes to the key components within their resume? So, um... I mean, it's really basic stuff, really. And, and and a lot of people, because they don't work in the space I work in, so they're not sort of, you know, uh, it's it's not the regular, it's not their day-to-day -day life. So it's just like, oh my gosh, I'm going to leave. I'm, you know, I need to put together a resume. What do I do? And it's just sort of like, oh my gosh, doom on them. And you're like, how, how do I go about that? How do I sell myself? Right. And so it, it just, just think of it in terms of the three F's, the three F's it's function. You know, you are informing an audience, myself and whomever you're sending your CV to about who you are and why we should invite you in for an interview. Um, the form that your resume takes when you write it, um, that's the second F. Um, it should look a certain way. Um, when I look at it, it, it should stand out from hundreds of others that I see. And it's not an F, but it's an E with a, with a, with a capital F, and it's the effectiveness. Um, for your resume to be effective, you sort of have to demonstrate function and form, right? Um, and try to match your resume to the job description that you are um, applying for. That will make my job easier when I'm reading your resume. Um, it shows, it's, it's supposed to show a clear match between what we've posted that we're looking, the opportunity we're looking to fill and your skill set. I shouldn't go through with a microscope trying to figure out why I should invite you in. It should clearly state it on your, in, in, in your resume, right? Pardon me, right? Um, you know, it, it should match to a certain degree what we're looking for. It doesn't have to be word for word, but to a certain degree. I also focus on some of the achievements that you've had throughout your, your career. So I can zero in on it and say, oh, this person worked on X deal and they would be a perfect match for what we're looking to bring in and have someone come in and sort of hit the ground running in our corporate group, right? Um, it should also be, your resume should 
be compelling to read and, and make me interested in wanting to know you. I'm only meeting you on paper. I don't know who you are. <laughs> You're like everybody else. So what you say on paper should be compelling for me to say, I must meet Lindsay. Lindsay stands out from all the other people that I've read today. I want to talk to her further, right? Um, it should be structured correctly. The format should, should be done appropriately. And above all, above all, please proofread. Proofread, proofread, proofread. If you're not a great proofreader, I know you know someone who is a great proofreader, send it to them. Um, I work in this space, I proofread my work, but I have friends that I share my CV with when, I'm look when I was looking to make a move, please proofread and make sure <laughs> everything makes sense, right? You need that because all you want is that, oh my goodness, you know, that, 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 that one mistake that, you know, grammatical error or whatever, that is just going to shine a bright light. And it really does. There's sort of like, there's a radar on there when, when you see it, because it jumps out. We read resumes every day. You automatically, it, you see all the mistakes immediately. Um, and, and that's it. You know, uh, that's, that's, those are some of the, the, the few tips that I would um, share with anyone who is uh, looking to make a move and um, is either starting from scratch in writing their resume or is looking to update their resume. Those are some of the, the points I would, I would share with them. So another version of our resume, leveraging social media, I know LinkedIn is a go-to resource. A lot of yeah. employers look at, um, you know, potential candidates, LinkedIn profiles. So do yeah. you have any tips when it comes to LinkedIn profiles on what they could do to enhance those if they're looking to go through the interview process? <laughs> so I live on LinkedIn. <laughs> Um, I think it's a great platform if used wisely. LinkedIn is great to network, uh, develop and elevate your brand as well as your, um, your company profile. Um, uh, I, I use it for, to look for industry news. I use it to, um, to read educational articles in the uh, recruiting space. Um, and, you know, sometimes you get the one or two inspirational uh, sort of posts that, you know, you may be feeling down one day and you and it helps to get you re, re, revived and um, energized. Um, and so uh, a few of the tips that I would share with an attorney or anyone in particular who's looking to make their next career move and is going to use LinkedIn as a platform to help them. Um, I would say, number one, keep your profile up to date, right? Let's start with a current picture. Your picture must look like you. <laughs> I cannot tell you, Lindsay, how many times that I was interviewing to come to make my next move before I came, when I was on my way to Fenmore. Everybody that I'm, they're like, oh my God, you look like your picture. And I thought to myself, are you meeting people who don't look like their picture? <laughs> I, I, that was just stunning for me to hear. It was just like, oh, wow, that's kind of scary. So keep your profile up to date. Start with updating your picture with a, um, go to a photographer and have them take a proper uh you know, profile picture of you or have a friend do something. If you can't afford that, go somewhere, have the background look professional and you can sort of go, you, you could do the research to see what those professional uh, LinkedIn profile pictures look like and mimic that and create one for yourself. If it's free, use your phone, use a camera, have a friend who take the picture and put on your, your professional suit and use that as your profile picture. That's one. Number two, um, try to be as comp comprehensive as possible about your skills and your objectives, right? Um, highlight, again, your recent work experience. What have you done recently that a prospective employer is going to say, okay, uh, that candidate looks like someone that we should have a conversation with. That's what I'm looking for when I'm on LinkedIn doing my recruiting searches. I'm looking at what you, what are your recent uh, work experience? What have you done 
at X firm or X company that would make it you interesting for my partners to have a chat, with, right? Um, update your headline. There's a headline um, there on LinkedIn that you should write something because that's the first thing people see when they click on your name is your profile picture and your headline. So what is that, what is the message that you're sending to those people? That's, that, that should be top of mind and get creative with it. Cr create a headline that speaks, that, that, that speaks for you, that tells your story in a snippet, in, in, in just a quick snippet. So create the perfect headline that, that, that tells who you are. Um, what else? Um, I would say let people know that you are available. There is a um, there's a, 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 there's a there's an option on LinkedIn that you can check to say you're available and looking for work. And I think at the moment it makes your um, there's a part a section of your profile picture that turns green. And so recruiters and, and, and folks like myself, when we do our searches and your name pop up, guess who I'm looking at first? Those are the people I'm gonna look at first. Those that have that green highlight on their name that says they're currently available and open for new opportunities. And so, just to clarify on that front, is it on, only viewable by people in a recruiting role or could their current employers see that? So there are two options. That's a great question. There are two options. The one with the green option, it's, I think it's viewable to everybody. I believe so. Then there's another one that's only viewable to me because I am, I, you know, we have our, our LinkedIn um, account that we use specifically to do a recruiting, right? So when we do those searches, those come up. So there are two options. The one with the green option that you tell the whole world you're available and the other private option where when we do our searches and your name pop up, then we see that you're also available if you don't use the, the one that highlights your, your profile picture, right? Um, and also, you know, build your network on LinkedIn. That's what it's there for. It's social media. It's social media recruiting. It's a recruiting platform and it's a networking platform. Um, try to have first degree connections. Uh, connect with people, as I said earlier in our, our, our conversation, uh, connect with people that you are interested in uh, the firm that you're, you may be looking to possibly work at, follow that firm. You can do that. Uh, same with companies, you know, work on making first degree connections and building that network with those people. And, um, you know, and I, that's, that's pretty much it. Just research the firms on, on LinkedIn, follow them, uh, check out what they post to see if there's interest. Um, they may have uh, free webinars, attend those webinars. Um, and that's how you build up your, your LinkedIn profile and your network. And it takes work <laughs> and it's, it doesn't, and there are people who just don't want to put in the work, but if you put in the work, the rewards are phenomenal. So as we like to wrap up today's conversation, I just have one more question for you. And okay. for those individuals, all right, they had a remarkable resume. Their LinkedIn profile looks really good. They make it to the interview process. What can they do? What can candidates do to stand out in the interview process, whether that's at Fenimore or any other corporation? Sure. Yeah. Okay. Um, so uh, I always tell folks that are looking for work and got the invitation to go in and meet with the, you know, the, the prospective employer, be prepared, be prepared. You've got, we've invited you in. We've sent you a list of all the people you're going to meet with. Research the folks you're meeting with. Have, you know, have an idea about who they are, what they have done, um, what they're back, you know, how do you connect with them? Uh, in terms of what you've done and what you're looking to do when you arrive at the firm. Uh, research the firm. Who, you know, you're going to work there. Why are you interested in working there? What have they done that, um, that sort of um, enticed you to apply for the role and why you want to continue the conversation and possibly work there? And that should come across in the interview, you know? Um, and everybody who you meet, 
um, you need to display some confidence. <laughs> you have to show up and be confident in who you are and know that you they must leave the interview feeling like this person could step into this role, take charge and run with it um, without little to no supervision, right? Be confident about the role you're applying for and why they should hire you, right? Um, also, uh, you know, I think it's a good, you know, go in with some questions. Come prepared with questions that are going to resonate, um, that shows that you are the right person for the role, you understand the culture that you're coming to, you've done some research about the people you're talking to, be prepared to have a conversation, like, you know, and, and that will make you stand out from candidate A or candidate B, because you did the work, and now you're, 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 you're showcasing it to the right people who are the decision makers that are going to uh, make you, uh, possibly make you an offer to come and join the firm. Um, and, 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 and finally, I would say, you know, I think Maya Angelou said it best, people um, will forget about uh, what you say and what you do, but they won't forget how you make them feel, right? So always leave a good impression. <laughs> and on that note, some great lasting words um, from you this morning. So, hey, really appreciate you taking some time, sharing some additional tips and some stories from your personal experience on today's episode of the Fen Talks podcast. Yes, it was a pleasure. I thoroughly enjoyed our conversation. Thank you so much for having me. Um, and if you're looking to join our firm, please reach out to me and I'd be happy to have a chat with you.